So now I will give the floor to uh, the president of the Human Rights Without Frontier, Willy Fautry. The floor is yours. Thank you. First, I want to uh, thank the organizers of this uh, conference uh, to invite me, uh, in particular uh, CAP, um, that defends the freedom of uh, conscience and uh, opinion. Our organization, Human Rights Without Frontiers, which is based in Brussels, has been known for about 20 years now uh, for defending religious freedom and also the freedom of uh, uh, spiritual uh, minorities. Uh, we, it's not the first time that a yoga group has approached us uh, because of difficulties and slandering, uh, difficulties with their own states and also uh, slandering campaigns by some anti-cult organizations. But in the case of uh, Jaroslav Dobesh and uh, Barbara Plaszkova, uh, we focused more on their uh, situation in uh, prison, in the, uh, well, say, detention center uh, in uh, Manila, and uh, we visited them uh, last year, not only them, but uh, the whole premises uh, uh, in which uh, they are uh, detained. Everything has been said, I think, about uh, the, the past and the present situation of Barbara Plaszkova and uh, Jaroslav Dobesh, but anyway, I would like to, to give some more details and to, uh, to focus on uh, some other issues. So those, those two Czech citizens, who are also EU citizens, have been respectively detained in the immigration detention center of Bagong de Diwa in the Philippines since April and May uh, 2015 on the grounds that their passport were no longer valid. That's the only reason why they have been deprived of their freedom. Jaroslav Dobesh and Barbara Plaszkova have been living and working for years as yoga teachers in the Philippines, and each of them has a child born in the country. And those children uh, don't have any access, any uh, relations with their father and uh, mother, uh, respectively. On the 14th of April 2015, Barbara Plaszkova went to the Czech consulate in Manila, in the Philippines, to prolong her, the validity of her passport. But she was denied a new one, and she was kept in the immigration detention center in Manila, where she still is. So the Philippines are not responsible at all for her situation. One month later, Jaroslav Dobesh was arrested in the Surigao del Norte in the Philippines, where he openly exercised his activities of yoga teacher because his passport was not valid anymore he was immediately sent to the immigration detention center in Manila. Both Czech citizens were hereby left undocumented by their embassy, the Czech embassy in the Philippines. So the first institution that is really responsible for this catch-22 situation is the Czech embassy and the Czech state and not the, the Philippines. In Prague, an international arrest warrant had in the meantime been issued against uh, both of them on the grounds that they had been uh, respectively sentenced to 10 years and nine years and a half in prison for alleged rapes of eight women in the Czech Republic between 2004, 2006. However, this decision, as it was said before, was totally canceled by a higher court for lack of evidence. <clears throat> On that very day when it was canceled, the legal situation of the two Czech EU citizens, I would say, totally changed. There was no sentence to be implemented. There was no evidence of guilt. And they were therefore fully entitled to enjoy the right to the presumption of innocence. Moreover, for two years and a half, no Czech court, no Czech court has ruled that Jaroslav Dobesh and Barbara Plaszkova had been guilty of rape or any other crime in the Czech Republic. There is therefore no obstacle for the Czech authorities to issue a new passport for their two citizens, still presumed innocent. 
to restore their freedom of movement, to give them the possibility to take care again of their underage children born and living in the Philippines. However, the Czech Ministry of Foreign Affairs goes on stating that, and I quote, the reason for, for which they were apprehended is fully under the jurisdiction of the Philippines and the decision of any changes related to their status is entirely outside the competence of the Czech Republic. But it's the Czech Republic that is responsible for that, admit, for that situation. So this is not true. <clears throat> it's not the Filipinos that are responsible for that. When you have undocumented uh, people in, uh, in Switzerland or in Belgium or, or in France, they are also uh, detained on an immigration uh, center, waiting sometimes uh, to, to be deported or, or handed over to, to another uh, country. But here is the Czech Republic that is responsible. So last year we visited uh, the, the immigration detention center, but we also had the opportunity to interview the commissioner in charge of that uh, detention center. He said that the Philippines were not against the presence of the two Czech citizens on its territory, as they had not committed any criminal activity. And he was ready to release them uh, if the Czech authorities, if the Czech authorities gave them a passport. So, <clears throat> a trial took place two years and a half ago, uh, and since then there has not been any other trial. Can Barbara Plashkova and Jaroslav Dobesh expect to get a fair trial in the Philippines? Uh, in the sorry, in the Czech Republic. Uh, after such an experience, being sentenced to ten years, and the other one uh, nine years and a half, and then the judgment totally cancelled, they don't trust the justice system of the Czech Republic anymore, because they were unjustly uh, sentenced to a very heavy prison term by a first instant uh, first instant court. Jaroslav Dobesh and Barbara Plashkova do not trust the justice system of the Czech Republic anymore, as the court of first instance in Brno was told to make a new decision, and for two years and a half, this has never been done. Jaroslav Dobesh and Barbara Plashkova do not trust the justice system of the Czech Republic anymore, as their presumption of innocence has not been respected during two years and a half. Jaroslav Dobesh and Barbara Plashkova do not trust the justice system of the Czech Republic anymore as the Czech authorities ask the Filipino authorities to keep them in the immigration detention center. Jaroslav Dobesh and Barbara Plashkova do not trust the justice system of the Czech Republic anymore as they don't respect the rights of their respective children to a family life. So many reasons for them not to believe that there would be a fair trial in the Czech uh, Republic. As I told you, we visited, I and uh, the president of uh, uh, Forev, that is based uh, in, uh, in Vienna, we visited uh, that immigration uh, detention center. We could meet uh, both Czech uh, citizens, uh, but also other uh, people, other foreigners. There are about one, there were at that time about uh, 140 uh, that were uh, detained. We could uh, talk to them. Uh, it is thanks to the commissioner on the immigration issues that we got uh, that uh, authorization, which is not easy uh, to get, as you can understand. So we met that commissioner twice, Mr. Ronaldo Geron, uh, at that time. We officially visited all the premises of the detention center under the guidance of the director, Mr. Erwin Otanias. We met with uh, Barbara and uh, Jaroslav as well as uh, with their lawyers. We interviewed EU detainees as well as non-EU citizen detainees without penitentiary uh, staff presence, so quite freely. We met with, and it was welcomed by the EU embassies in Manila, except the Czech consulate. 
that did everything not to talk to us, which really uh, de regret. In conclusion, our delega delegation declared at uh, that time that the detention living space is insufficient for the current, at that time, for, for the 147 uh, detainees. That the detention conditions are appalling. That the food is of poor quality and insufficient quantity. That there is a shop in the center where the detainees can buy ingredients, if they have money, to complete their meager rations. That there are several kitchen facilities that Hindus, Chinese, and Muslims can use in order to respect their religious or cultural traditions, but there is no hygiene at all and they are in a very dirty uh, condition. Detainees have access to a billiard uh, table and uh, some equipment for physical exercise, but there is no medical assistance at the detention center due to the absence of any specific government budget for such amenities. The detainees largely appreciated the management of the new warden at the time and uh, its staff, underlining major improvements to detention conditions. But at the end of the visit, we were really appalled by the situation in which they had been forced to live for two years and a half, for 30 months, and, and now, how, how many more months uh, in, in the future, we don't know, and we hope that a solution uh, will, will be found. We have some recommendations to make, but first, I would like to, to show you some, uh, some pictures that we took in the detention center. So first, we were uh, with the, the director of the detention center, a very humane uh, person, which was not the case with the previous heads of the detention center. This is a group uh, of uh, Americans. Uh, you see it's uh, very hot, very humid uh, uh, most of the time uh, during summer and, uh, uh, and spring in, uh, in, the, in that uh, prison. I think we can call it a prison. Uh, I could talk to them freely without any supervision by the, the head of the prison or any staff. Uh, these are the, the toilets. Uh, <clears throat> Well, this is a room, you see how poor conditions uh, are. Uh, and then here I was approached by uh, Hindu people. Uh, they were telling me uh, that they were, had been unfairly put uh, and unjustly put uh, in uh, this detention uh, center. Of course, each case is different and I could not have an opinion uh, about that, but they were just complaining. You see how dirty uh, those uh, premises are where they cook uh, according to their own religious uh, beliefs. Yeah, <clears throat> so very, very dirty uh, ev everywhere. Yeah, Chinese uh, kitchen. Yeah, so this is a place uh, where they had uh, some physical uh, training, so outside. But there are fences uh, all, all around, uh, and they don't try to escape, uh, I would say. Uh, I was in contact with the former detainees who had been uh, released after several years. And when they went back to either to Germany and to Greece, I had contacts with them. They were never sentenced to anything. So, and they spent several years in that detention center. It's the same case for those two Czech uh, citizens. So you see how it looks like uh, inside uh, the, the detention center. So we had a room that was put at our disposal to meet with uh, each of them, e each of those who wanted to talk to us uh, individually. Uh, on the left was the representative of uh, uh, 4F uh, in, uh, in, in Vienna. And then you see, so we had a talk as well with uh, our two Czech uh, friends. And so at the end, uh, um, we were very happy with uh, our contact with the, the head of the, the, the prison that was uh, uh, standing on my right uh, in the picture, on the right, when we, on the left, when we look uh, at the picture. Uh, unfortunately, it has been replaced by, by somebody else. I don't know now how the situation looks like, but at least you have an idea in which conditions uh, they are detained. There are also quarrels, huh? which means that there is violence uh, from time to time. And anything can happen in, in such conditions to Barbara Plashkova and to Yaroslav Dobes. 
So we were leaving, hoping on both sides that uh, the situation could be improved. Even the director of the prison was saying to us, uh, well, we hope that you will find a solution in that case, but also in other cases. He said, we have a guy here from uh, Ireland. Uh, he, can be, he can go back uh, to, to his country uh, because the prosecution uh, charges have been dropped, but he doesn't have any money. And, and that's why he's staying here. Uh, he's forced uh, to stay here. So it, it, it's almost the same situation with Yaroslav Dobesh and Barbara Plashkova. Thank you for your attention. But I would like to finish by some recommendations, and constructive recommendations, uh, because I can understand uh, the, the authorities on both sides, in the Philippines and uh, in the Czech uh, Republic. So we share those uh, recommendations with various authorities, Czech authorities, Filipino authorities, uh, but also uh, last month, or no, two months ago, when we were at the OSCE annual meeting uh, on human rights in Warsaw that is attended by uh, the political uh, delegations of all the participants participating states, more than uh, uh, 50, including the, the Czech delegation. So we concretely propose a solution to get out of the, the, tra the trap and uh, <laughs> uh, that uh, catch-22 uh, situation. Okay, I think that now <laughs> we've, okay, yes, okay, some problems. Uh, and then in two minutes, the maximum, it will be finished. So the, the room will be available for, for another event. So we recommend that the Czech authorities respect the presumption of innocence of Jaroslav Dobesh and Barbara Plaskova as the prison sentence released by the regional court in Blo in October tw 2014 was totally canceled by the High Court of Olomouc in May 2015. Second, to communicate the content of the Interpol arrest warrants against Jaroslav Dobesh and Barbara Plaskova to their lawyers, to grant Jaroslav Dobesh and Barbara Plaskova new passports, even if limited to travels between the Philippines and the Czech Republic, in order to put an end to their status of undocumented persons and to their detention at the Bagong Diwa Immigration Detention Center to agree with the Filipino authorities that they can release them, to agree with the Filipino authorities that they will have to regularly report to the police station close to their residence, and finally, to maintain this proposed administrative situation as long as there is no new legal or judicial development in their case in the Czech Republic. Thank you for your attention.